What is going on you guys? Brandon here, AKA Barwadis, and today I am bringing you guys a brand new video. Now hold on, before I get into today's video, let me just address something really quick. So every time I make a basketball talking video, I get a bunch of hate in the comment section. Why did you upload this? This is so boring. Why are you making a video where you're just sitting and talking about basketball? Well, the title and thumbnail is literally showing what this video is going to be about. I'm not putting some type of misleading title and thumbnail. Now, I'm not sitting here and making a video talking about basketball with a thumbnail of me, Brian, Jackie, and me doing some crazy prank. No, that's not what it is. The title and thumbnail is about basketball, so the video is me sitting and talking about basketball. If you don't like the videos where I'm sitting and talking about basketball, then maybe you shouldn't click the videos with a title and thumbnail that shows that I'm going to be sitting and talking about basketball. I don't know, maybe I'm crazy, but that's just me. Me. Anyways, time to get into today's video. So it is really early right now. It's about 8 a.m., 8 in the morning. And I woke up, you know, regular morning just like any other day. And I checked my phone. And what do you know? Eric Bledsoe traded. Eric Bledsoe has been traded from the Phoenix Suns over to the Milwaukee Bucks. And as upset as I am, you know, as sad as I am, this is obviously something that I saw coming. Just last week, I actually predicted that Eric Bledsoe would end up on the Milwaukee Bucks. This makes sense for both sides. It's going to be the Milwaukee Bucks. If I had to put my money on it, if I had to guess, I think a deal eventually gets done with Milwaukee. And I mean, even though it's something that I expected, it's something that I knew was coming, it's still a sad day for me because I've been a Suns fan my whole life. And the past couple of years, you know, Bledsoe has been a really, really good player for us. And I've actually gotten really close to him as a person. I've already talked to him after the trade and everything. I've gotten really close to him, his family. You know, every time I'd go to Phoenix, I would see him in the locker room after the game. And he's just been really cool with me. And as sad as I am to see him leave the Phoenix Suns, I know that this move makes him happy. So I support it. But, so first and foremost, let's get into what the trade was. Eric Bledsoe from the Phoenix Suns going to the Milwaukee Bucks and what the Suns got in return is Greg Monroe, Milwaukee's first round pick in this upcoming draft and their second round pick in this upcoming draft. So at first glance, you look at this trade like, what the heck, the Suns traded a player like Eric Bledsoe just for Greg Monroe, what the heck, blah, blah, blah. And a bunch of Suns fans are going crazy and you know, they're upset. But here, I'll break that down later in this video. First, let's get into what this trade means for Milwaukee. Oh man, when I say Milwaukee is a winner in this deal, look, any time you can pounce on a player like Eric Bledsoe in a situation where the Phoenix Suns have no leverage because of everything that's happened leading up to the moment of the trade, you do it. And the Milwaukee Bucks did just that. They traded for Eric Bledsoe, they kept Malcolm Brogdon, they kept Chris Middleton, they kept Jabari Parker, they kept Thon Maker, they traded for Eric Bledsoe while keeping all of their assets, while keeping all of their core intact. And if you're a Milwaukee fan, you have to be ecstatic. Even if you don't like Eric Bledsoe as a player, the fact that Milwaukee got Eric Bledsoe for such little assets should make any Milwaukee fan ecstatic and happy. And I'm sure Giannis is happy right now because he gets his surefire second fiddle, his second star. I mean, Chris Middleton stepped up big in a lot of games. Malcolm Brogdon has looked really, really good in a lot of games. But now with Eric Bledsoe there, you have that solidified second option. It's not some random person needing to step up every night for the Bucks. It's Giannis number one, and then Bledsoe is that solidified number two. And then whatever extra you get from Brogdon, from Middleton, from Jabari Parker when he comes back from injury, that's just extra on top of what Giannis and Bledsoe are going to give you. For those who forget, Eric Bledsoe is a 20 point per game scorer. He dishes out seven assists and he plays really good defense. I think the culture of the Bucks right now is, is defense. That's all their players are long. They defend, they get out and run on the fast break and Eric Bledsoe fits just that. And I think Milwaukee's smart. They saw an opportunity where they could get a really good player for really cheap and they pounced all over it. I'm sure LeBron James is over there in Cleveland mad at his front office because he wanted Bledsoe. I know Denver wanted a player like Eric Bledsoe. I think the Knicks, Pelicans, Clippers, Pistons, they were all trying to fight for his services. So Milwaukee should be really happy that they got him. Obviously, Milwaukee was already a playoff team before this, but I think this solidifies Milwaukee as a top 
four seed. I'm not going to sit here just because I like Eric Bledsoe. I'm not going to sit here and lie and be like, oh, they got Eric Bledsoe. They're winning the championship. It's over. Blah, blah, blah. No, I'm not going to say that. I'm, I'm a real fan. I'm honest. I think this trade makes Milwaukee a little bit better. It makes life much easier for Giannis and for Eric Bledsoe. But I think this solidifies Milwaukee as the top four seed in the playoffs. And I'm happy for Bledsoe. He's, he's going to a playoff contender. He's playing with a really, really good player in Giannis Antetokounmpo, a superstar in Giannis. And quite honestly, Bledsoe in the East, okay, this is no secret to anyone watching this, the East is a pretty weak conference. Eric Bledsoe has a chance to be an all-star. The East doesn't have too many dominant guards. Most of them shifted over to the West. So now Bledsoe going to the East, I'm not saying he's a surefire all-star, but he definitely has a chance. So to close out my segment on the Milwaukee side, Hey, you can't complain at all. Even if this whole Eric Bledsoe trade doesn't work out, they barely gave anything away. So they can't complain. They made a really good move and there's just not much risk to this move for them. It's mostly reward, reward, reward. That's what it is for the Milwaukee Bucks. And they're noticing the Cleveland Cavaliers are struggling. They know Boston, even though Boston has been really hot and they've looked really good this season, Gordon Hayward is still down. There's no for sure timetable when he's gonna come back. So I think Milwaukee is looking at this opportunity and saying, hey, we could pounce on something right here in the East and we'll see what happens with Milwaukee. Now onto the Phoenix Sun side. Like I said, a player like Eric Bledsoe, 20 points per game, six assists per game, in his prime, good defender, good contract. He only makes 13, 14 million dollars a year. You get Greg Monroe and a couple of picks from a playoff team and you're sitting there as a Suns fan and you're like, when is this gonna end? When are we not going to get ripped off in trades anymore? But I'm sitting here and I'm not too mad at this trade. I'm not, I'm really not. And I talk to a lot of Suns fans who are acting like it's the end of the world. But you gotta remember, the situation that we were in, it, it's not like we just traded Eric Bledsoe randomly for this kind of return. Then I would have been mad. It's the fact of the situation that we were put in. That's what makes this return not that bad. Hey, for what Eric Bledsoe tweeted and then for the Suns general manager to come out and talk about how Bledsoe's not a leader and, you know, making him sound like a troublemaker, the Suns are lucky, in my opinion, to get an expiring contract in Greg Monroe and two draft picks. They're lucky. That's just my opinion. Obviously, they wanted Malcolm Brogdon. Heck, I wanted Malcolm Brogdon on the team. But when you factor in, like, the whole situation, all the steps leading up to the Bledsoe trade, and the Suns just had no leverage at all. And then, okay, look back in the offseason. What did the Bulls get for Jimmy Butler? Everyone said the Bulls got ripped off. What did the Pacers get for Paul George? Again, everyone at that time said, what the heck, Sabonis and Old Depot for Paul George? The Pacers got ripped off. What did the Knicks get for Melo? Everyone at that time said, Oh my gosh, OKC ripped the Knicks off. They got mellow just for that. And that's without those players tweeting, I don't want to be here. That's with those players just unexpectedly getting traded. So if you thought the Suns were going to get something more than that after the whole Eric Bledsoe tweet and the whole situation where they sent him home, come on, it, it just wasn't realistic. So me, I had set my standards low. I knew after Bledsoe tweeted that and after the Suns sent him home that the Suns realistically they weren't gonna get anything of good value in return. If you thought they were gonna, you know, trade Bledsoe for some type of superstar, it just was not gonna happen. Maybe if this was last year and the situation was tamed and didn't get out of hand, then yeah, you could expect to get someone really good, but not after everything that happened. So Eric Bledsoe was on the books for the next two seasons, this season and next season, and he was making around $14 million a year. Now you bring in Greg Monroe, who's an expiring contract. So he is off the books this season, meaning the Suns clear up a bunch of cap space for this upcoming summer. So that's number one. Number two, the Phoenix Suns acquiring the first round pick from Milwaukee. Now we have three first round picks in this upcoming draft. We have our own, which should be top five. We have Miami's first round pick. And then now we have Milwaukee's first round pick. Three first round picks. You can never have too many draft picks. Whether the Suns are gonna draft three rookies, which I doubt, or they're gonna use those picks to trade for a star, who knows? Look at what all these teams in the past have done when they've had a bunch of draft picks, they use them and they trade for a star. So it just puts the Suns in good position. And not to mention, the Suns have four second round picks in this year's draft. Three first rounders, four second round picks. The Suns have seven 
freaking picks in the 2018 NBA draft. And that almost guarantees that the Suns are going to make another trade, whether it's at the trade deadline or whether it's on draft night, because there's no way the Phoenix Suns are bringing in seven rookies to the team next season. There's no way the team is even bringing in three rookies next season. I'd be absolutely shocked and stunned if the Phoenix Suns actually kept and used their first round pick, Miami's first round pick, and Milwaukee's first round pick. I'd be willing to bet right now that at least one, if not two of those picks are getting traded. And that's exactly what the Phoenix Suns want. Right now, they're not a championship team. Heck, they're not even a playoff team. They're rebuilding. They're trying to figure out their core for the future. So that's exactly what you want. You want cap space and you want draft picks. And that's exactly what we got. Look at what Brooklyn did this summer because they had a bunch of cap space. They took on Timofey Mozgov's huge contract from the Lakers and they got rewarded with D'Angelo Russell in return. So that's what having open cap space could do. Or if you're not using the cap space in a trade, just having cap space could get you to get a big name free agent. Obviously right now, Phoenix is not the hottest destination. We are not going to attract a LeBron James or a Kevin Durant to come play for the Suns, but Devin Booker is close to a lot of NBA players. He has a lot of different NBA players in his circle. So Devin Booker could possibly convince somebody to come to Phoenix and that wouldn't have been possible if we didn't have a lot of cap space. So now that we've opened up cap space and acquired so many draft picks, hey, you never know. Cause I tweeted, I said, the Suns have to trade these draft picks for a star. There's no way we could draft seven players. And a lot of people were tweeting me, Brandon, which star is available? No one's available right now. Well. You guys are right, no one's available right now, but who thought Kyrie Irving was gonna be available? Who thought Eric Bledsoe was gonna tweet, I don't wanna be here? What I'm trying to say is that unexpected things happen in the NBA all the time. So right now there could be no one available and we could wake up tomorrow with some random star player going to his coach saying, I don't wanna play here anymore, I wanna trade. And that's when the Suns look and say, whoa, we have so much cap space. We have so many draft picks. Let's make a trade. So that's what this deal does. I'm not going to sit here and be like, oh, the Suns ripped off the Bucks. We got a great trade. No, that, because that's just bogus. But I really think that it's time to cash in these assets for a star. The Suns have been acquiring assets, acquiring assets, acquiring assets for the past three, four, maybe even five years. And they haven't really looked to cash them in. They've just been acquiring them, acquiring them. Well, now I think it's finally time. We have the face of the franchise in Devin Booker. We have our core set with Josh Jackson, TJ Warren, Dragon Bender, Marquise Chris, Tyler Eulis. We have all these players. We don't need to bring in any more big time rookies. We don't need to draft a bunch of guys. We don't need to go out and sign players who we could develop. No, I think it is time to cash in our assets and acquire a star. And that's exactly what this trade enables us to do. So all in all, I think this is a win-win for both teams. I think it's more of a win for Milwaukee, obviously, and they're getting a hell of a player in Eric Bledsoe. Trust me on that. But I also think it's a win for the Phoenix Suns. So for all the Suns fans who are down on this trade or for all the NBA fans who are saying that the Suns got ripped off, please sit back and look at the position the Suns were in. In my opinion, we are lucky to get two draft picks and Greg Monroe, not to mention, I haven't really said anything about Greg Monroe except that he's an expiring contract, but he could actually help us this season. Worst case scenario, he'll be better than what Tyson Chandler has been. That's all I'm gonna say. Last but not least, to my guy, Eric Bledsoe, like I said, I already talked to him, but I know him and his brother, they watch my videos. So Bled, I'm happy for you. You're going to a playoff team and sadly, we weren't able to make the playoffs in Phoenix. I wish I got to see you play in a playoff game for the Suns, but obviously that didn't happen. So you're going to a playoff team. You have a chance at making the all-star team, which probably wasn't gonna be possible in the West. And you're playing with someone like Giannis Antetokounmpo. So I'm happy for you, bro. And it should be fun watching him in Milwaukee for the Suns. This makes me even more excited for their future. And, and like I said, for the position that the Suns were in, I can't be mad at this deal. I'm excited to see what we use these draft picks for because like i said the phoenix suns are not bringing in that many rookies next season there's going to be another trade there's going to be a lot of movement on this team and i just don't know if it's going to be in february at the trade deadline or if it's going to be in july or june in the off season so we'll see um other than that guys that's going to close out today's video i had to give my thoughts on this trade I, I went to sleep last night eric bledsoe was a phoenix sun i wake up this morning early and eric bledsoe was a member of the milwaukee bucks once again, if you're here to comment on this video, oh, this video is boring. Why did I watch this? I wasted my time. Hey, it's not my fault that you saw a title and thumbnail of a basketball video and you clicked on it expecting something different. It just, that just makes no sense. So, but to all my people who actually like watching these videos, shout out to you guys. I don't do them often. So for those who complain about them, 
I don't know. I just, I don't pay attention to that. It makes no sense. I do these videos about once a month, if that, maybe once every couple months. Anyways, guys, Brandon here, AKA Bruatis. I am out and thank you so much for watching this video, guys. And really quick, guys, before closing this video out officially, I just want to say that this video was sponsored by SeatGeek. Now, if you don't know what SeatGeek is, you got to get with the program, guys. It is the cheapest, fastest, and easiest way to get your tickets not only to basketball games or football games or sporting events, but also to any concerts or anything like that. That's who sends me over to all the NBA games. So all the vlogs you see where I'm sitting courtside meeting all these NBA players, that is all thanks to SeatGeek. And actually, on top of already being the fastest, easiest, cheapest way to get your guys' tickets, if you click the link in the description down below and use my promo code BA, you actually get $20 back on your first purchase. So $20 back on top of already having cheap tickets, what more could you ask for? SeatGeek, use them. Link in the description down below. And thank you guys.